Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Level Automotive. Welcome back to another video, and welcome back to another case study. Right behind me, I have a very beautiful 2018 Ford F-150. It's got the V6 2.7 liter EcoBoost engine. And the customer complaint is that when he's driving it, the charging system light comes on. There's a little message in the center of the console that tells him check charging system. Now the customer did state that he took the vehicle to the dealership. He had them take a look at it and they ended up putting a battery in it. So he said he paid a few hundred dollars for them to put a battery in it but he was still getting the charging system light and that didn't fix his problem. So anyways, the truck is here now. He wanted me to check it out. So let's go ahead and get started. All right guys, so let's move inside the vehicle. I'm gonna go ahead and start this thing up and show you uh, the message that comes up on the instrument cluster. Let me get the key in the ignition. Let's go ahead and uh, crank this thing up. Vehicle's on. Let me go ahead and shut the door. All right, so the vehicle is running. Uh, right now, we don't have the message coming on. And uh, this vehicle is actually not equipped with a uh, voltmeter for the engine. And I don't see the message at the moment. I guess let's wait for the idle to come down. All right, so I don't see the message at the moment. Uh, I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is move under the hood. And uh, let's see if we can get a voltage reading on the battery. All right, guys, so moving under the hood. I've got my multimeter set up over here. And we just have it... Uh, set to where it's got a nice big number so it's easy to see anyways the battery is over here of course this is a brand new battery they just replaced it a couple days ago and uh, i've got my negative lead here and i've got my positive lead i'm just going to go ahead and touch the battery and let's see what voltage we're getting all right so looking at that we're looking at 11.6 volts this charging system is definitely not charging so there is definitely a problem even though we don't see a message in the instrument cluster right now uh, there is definitely a problem with the charging system so i think probably the next thing we want to do is uh, get a measurement directly from the alternator which i believe is located uh, down here let me see if i can get a visual on it yeah that thing's buried down there i don't know if you can see let me turn on the light all right so hopefully you guys can see that alternator it's buried pretty deep in there so i'm gonna go ahead and see if i can access the terminal on the back side all right so i think we may be able to access the uh battery post at the alternator on the back side over here Let's see if i can get a visual all right so hopefully you guys can see uh this right here if i pull this rubber boot back you'll see the b plus terminal stud on the back of the alternator here we're gonna go ahead and get a voltage measurement right here while the engine is running. All right guys, so we got a rainstorm coming in. I'm gonna try to beat the rainstorm. Let me go ahead and start the vehicle up. And we're gonna go ahead and get a measurement on that alternator. All right guys, so just go ahead and concentrate on that screen. I'm gonna go ahead and touch the alternator post. And there we have it. We have 11.55 volts. So we definitely have a problem with the alternator not charging. Uh, it's already starting to rain, so let me go ahead and get this truck inside the shop. All right guys, so we're back here at the computer. I've got the wiring diagram pulled up for the charging system. And I guess I should mention that I did call the parts department to see how much the alternator was for this vehicle because the customer wanted an idea of the worst case scenario, which I don't even know if that's the worst case scenario because there's also some other things involved in the charging system but anyway the alternator is over 750 dollars list price for this thing so needless to say we need to make sure that we make the right call because what we don't want to happen is us purchase an alternator put it on the vehicle and it does not fix the problem so we need to make sure that all our inputs to the alternator are there and that there isn't anything else affecting the alternator and why it's not charging so i'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this wiring diagram let's get you an idea of all the components that are involved in the system so if we scroll down uh, right here you'll see the generator and we have uh, the main battery post which is the b plus post we've already checked that we don't have sufficient charging voltage coming out of the alternator here so we definitely know that there's a problem with the alternator not charging now what we need to do is we need to look for some inputs and that's going to be the three wires that we're dealing with right here so uh, we have this wire right here which is a gray and red wire and if we follow it up let me deselect this one so if we follow up the highlighted uh, wire, you'll see that it goes to the battery junction box and there is a 10 amp fuse 
fuse 45. This 10 amp fuse gets its power from the battery. So one of the first things we need to do is we need to check to see if this 10 amp fuse is not blown or we can do that at the connector. So if we go down to the alternator and we locate this wire here, we need to make sure that we have system voltage at this wire. So that's one thing we need to check. And then also we have two other lines here. And if you look, these two lines actually go back to the engine computer. So if we look over here, this is the powertrain control module right here. And if you look, it says G-E-N-C-O-M. So I guess that means generator communication. If I'm not mistaken, these are the two communication lines for the generator. Now, if you take a look at this wiring diagram, you'll see that there are other components involved. If we move over here, you'll see that we have a generator current sensor. This is a sensor that's located on the positive battery terminal. And if we look over here, you'll see the battery current sensor. This is another sensor that's located on the negative side of the battery. Now, if you look, this battery current sensor has communication lines that go over to the BCM. So according to this diagram, the BCM is also involved in the charging system. So uh, there are a few things that we need to look at. And to be honest with you, I don't fully understand how the system works. So what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to pull up a system description and hopefully we can get some information so that we can understand how the system works. All right, guys, so I was able to find a description for the charging system. And uh, if you look, these are the components that are involved. Of course, we have a generator, which is the alternator. And it says here that it has an internal voltage regulator. Uh, also, there's the charging system warning indicator. Of course, there's a battery. There's a circuitry in the cables. There's the PCM. There's a radial arm adapter, which is serviced separately from the generator. I'm not really sure what that is. And also, we have a battery current sensor and we have a generator current sensor. So there's two different current sensors on the system. So. Uh, if you look at the description, it gives us a basic overview. It says here the generator is driven by the belt. When the engine is started, the generator begins to generate AC voltage, which is internally converted to DC voltage. And then the PCM determines the desired voltage level and it communicates this to the generator internal voltage regulator over two control and communication circuits. They're referring to those two communication wires that we found at the alternator that go back to the PCM. So if you continue reading, it says here the voltage regulator which is located on the rear of the generator, controls the DC voltage output level, which is applied to the electrical system and charges the battery. So that's pretty basic knowledge. If you continue here, it says this vehicle is equipped with load shed strategy. I'm not really sure what that means, but it says the body control module monitors the battery state of charge using the battery current sensor attached to the negative battery cable. And the battery open circuit voltage is measured by the BCM during eight continuous hours of vehicle sleep time with the ignition off and the doors closed. So I guess what they're trying to say is that the BCM uses the battery current sensor, which is a sensor that's attached to the negative battery cable to measure the state of charge while the vehicle is off. So I'm assuming it's doing that because it wants to know how quickly the battery is discharging uh, with no load on it. So, I mean, I'm only assuming that judging by the information they're giving me, let's move on. It says here with the engine off and the ignition in the accessory or run or delayed accessory position, when the BCM determines the battery state of charge is low, a message is sent to shut down the audio navigation system in order to save the remaining battery charge. Under this condition, the front display interface module displays system off to save battery. And in the instrument panel, it has a message that says turn power off to save battery. Uh, I really don't think that that has anything to do with what we're dealing with. Now it says here, if the vehicle battery has been charged or battery replaced, it takes approximately eight hours for the BCM to learn the new battery state of charge. Now that's really important because the customer did just have the battery replaced at the dealership. So I'm not sure if they knew whether or not to let the vehicle sit for eight hours undisturbed. Anyways, it says here during this eight hour period, the vehicle must be undisturbed with no doors opened or keyless entry buttons pressed. If the vehicle is used before the BCM is allowed to learn the new battery state of charge, engine offload shedding may occur and a message may be displayed. Now that's some interesting information. I don't know if that's really what we're dealing with because uh, the message that he's getting on the instrument panel uh, does not say anything about saving battery or turning power off to save battery. Uh, it just says check charging system. Let me share with you a picture of the message that's on the instrument panel. Okay, so if we continue to diagnosis and testing, uh, it says here principles of operation. The PCM controlled or smart charging system determines the optimal voltage set point for the charging system and communicates this information to the voltage regulator. The smart charge charging system is designed to set a DTC anytime a charging system fault is present. 
All DTCs can be set as continuous faults, but not all DTCs are set as on-demand faults. So that's useful information. Moving on, it says this system uses two communication lines between the PCM and the generator voltage regulator. Again, those are the two communication lines that we saw at the connector on the alternator. It says both of these communication lines use a pulse width modulated signal. That's real important information. That's something that we need to know because if we connect the lab scope to this thing, we need to know what we should be looking for. Anyways, it says the generator communication GenCom line communicates the desired set point from the PCM to the voltage regulator. The generator monitor, which is a Gen Mon line communicates the generator load and error conditions to the PCM. The GenCom command is only sent by the PCM when it is necessary to adjust the voltage set point. If the set point does not need to be changed, several seconds may elapse between PCM GenCom commands. So what they're saying there is that the two lines designated as GenCom and GenMon. So the GenCom line is a command line from the PCM to the alternator regulator. And the GenMon is a monitor line that comes from the alternator that goes back to the PCM that's used to tell the PCM when there's an error. All right, so the other important piece of information that they're giving us is that the PCM GenCom, which is the command from the PCM to the alternator, which again is a pulse width modulated signal, they're telling us that that command is not constant. The command is only sent to the alternator when it wants to change the alternator voltage output. So essentially what we may see on that communication line is the pulse width modulated signal come and go. It's not going to be constant. If you look here, it says this normal operation appears in the PID, which they're referring to the data PID on the scan tool as occasional burst of pulse width commands. So like I said, that pulse width modulated signal generated by the PCM is not gonna be constant. It's gonna be coming and going. Now to finish off this paragraph, they tell you that the third pin on the voltage regulator, which is designated as the letter A, is a circuit dedicated to monitor or sense battery voltage. So hopefully you guys are following along. Hopefully this makes sense. Hopefully I didn't bore you guys to death, but I just think it's really important for us to get an overview of how the charging system works on this vehicle. We can go back to the wiring diagram. All right guys, so now that we've gone over the system description, we now have a better understanding of how the system works. We can now come back to the wiring diagram armed with the knowledge that we need in order to create a plan of attack for troubleshooting this vehicle. So again, we have our alternator over here and we have our three wires on the connector for the alternator. Starting with pin three, this is going to be the A terminal. And according to the system description, this A terminal is a battery voltage feed that is used by the voltage regulator to determine system voltage. So probably the first thing we're gonna wanna do is hook up our meter here. We're gonna wanna make sure that we have system voltage at pin three. And as long as we have voltage here, we can move over to terminal two. Terminal two, if you follow this back to the computer over here, it says Gen Com. And if you recall, Gen Com is going to be our command line. This is going to be a pulse width modulated signal, which is a command that gets sent from the PCM to the alternator. So what we're gonna to wanna to do here is we're gonna to wanna to connect our lab scope on pin two, and we're gonna be looking for a pulse width modulated signal. Now, if you recall, according to the system description, this pulse width modulated signal is not a constant signal. It's going to come and go in sporadic bursts. So when we hook up our lab scope here, all we're gonna be looking for is activity. We wanna see if we have a pulse width modulated signal showing up here at pin two. Now, moving on to pin one, this is going to be the wire that goes back to the computer and if you look over here, it says Gen Mon, M-O-N. That's going to be our monitor signal. Again, according to the description, this is a signal that is generated by the alternator that gets sent back to the PCM, and it's used for the PCM to determine if there is a problem with the alternator. I'm not really sure what we should be seeing on this line because the system description doesn't really tell us what to look for. So to be honest with you, I'm really only gonna be looking for activity. As long as I see some type of activity on this pin one, then we can assume that this line is working. So anyways, guys, that's the plan of attack. Let's go ahead and move back to the vehicle and do our checks. All right, so moving back to the vehicle, guys, let me take you to the alternator. All right, guys, so I've got the camera on the alternator and I have you guys focused in on the connector for the alternator. You can see we have our three wires there. And right now we are back probed on the terminal A, which is the fused power feed that comes from the battery. And let me show you what we have on the meter. All right, so moving up to the meter, you can see we have 11.9 volts. That is battery voltage. And what that's telling us is that the power source is getting to the alternator. So the fuse is good. Let's go ahead and move on to the next pin. All right, so moving back to the alternator, 
You can see we're back probed on the center wire. That's going to be our Gen Com line. Again, the Gen Com is going to be the command, which is a pulse width modulated signal that gets sent from the PCM to the alternator. Let's go ahead and move back up to the meter. All right, so moving back to the meter, I have it set up as a lab scope because like I said, this is gonna be a pulse width modulated signal. So we're gonna be looking for some square waves. Right now we show a flat line, 11.33 volts. I'm gonna go ahead and start the vehicle up. Let's go ahead and start this thing up. Now let's move back under the hood. All right guys, so moving back under the hood, I've got the meter set to a lab scope. And if you look, we have uh, some activity going on. Let me see if I can uh, maybe zoom in a smaller scale. Let's see if we can get some more detail. Again, according to the information that we got, this signal is gonna be coming and going. It's not going to be a constant signal. So if we pay attention, we should see burst. There you go. You see it again there. You see it again there. Again there. Let me zoom out a little bit again. We're at a 200 millisecond time base. And there goes our Pulse with modulated signal, just kind of coming and going. See it there again. Now, this signal, we really can't decipher anything from the signal other than the fact that we know the PCM communication is reaching the alternator. So that's really all we can do with the signal. We're just looking to see if it's reaching the alternator. It is. Let's go ahead and move on to the next wire. All right, so we have our back probe on that third and final wire. Again, according to the diagram and according to the description, this wire is going to be the Gen Mon, which is the monitor for the alternator output. Again, this is a signal that's generated by the alternator that gets sent to the PCM, and it's used to tell the PCM when there is a problem with the alternator. So let's go ahead and move back up to the meter. Let me start this thing back up. Let's move back under the hood. All right, so looking at our signal, uh, if you look, we're pretty much flatlined at 0.3 volts. I really don't see any activity on this line. Then again, I'm not really sure what I should be saying, to be honest with you. The uh, system description doesn't really give us a whole lot of information about this. And I wish I had a known good vehicle so that I could pull a known good waveform off of it, but I simply don't. So at the moment, I'm not really sure if that's normal or not. But at this point, I feel pretty confident calling the alternator bad. I mean, we have everything else we need. We have the battery voltage at the A terminal. We have a command coming from the PCM getting to the alternator on the Gen Com line. And this signal on the Gen Mon line that we're looking at now, again, I'm not really sure what it's supposed to look like, but I do see a voltage there. So at this point, I feel pretty confident calling the alternator bad. So let's go ahead and get one on order and get it replaced. All right guys, so check this out. As I was getting ready to turn the truck off, uh, I noticed that our message popped up. If you look at that, it says charging system service now. So there's definitely a problem with the alternator. I don't think the PCM likes what it sees on that gem monitor line. So once again, I feel pretty confident. Let's go ahead and change this alternator. All right guys, so in case you're wondering what a $700 alternator looks like, it's right here. There's the uh, motorcraft number right there. And uh, what I did notice about this is that it does have a one-way pulley or a one-way clutch on the pulley. So I guess that's one of the reasons it's so expensive. So yeah, let's go ahead and put this bad boy in. All right, so I've got the old alternator out right here. I've got the two of them side by side, just to give you guys a visual. Let's go ahead and put this in. All right, guys, so we've got the new alternator installed. It is time for the moment of truth. Let me go ahead and crank this thing up. Engine is running. We don't have the message here. So let's go under the hood and check our battery voltage. All right, guys, so moving under the hood. Over here at the battery, I've got my power probe connected. As you can see, I have the negative lead and the positive lead connected. And I'm just gonna use this because I wanna get a voltage reading off of the battery. Let's see what we got. All right, so looking at the meter here, we've got 14 volts. So our alternator is charging now. Let me go ahead and take you over to the lab scope. And uh, I'm still connected 
on the gen monitor which is the monitor signal uh, at the alternator and if you recall before we did not have any activity on this line we were pretty much showing a flat line 0.3 volts and if you look now we have some activity so first off you'll see that we're at 13.45 volts and if you look we have a signal let me go ahead and zoom in on the signal there's 50 milliseconds let's get a little bit more detail all right so there's our signal there you can see we've got some square waves let me move my trigger over so we can see this a little bit better okay so we've got some square waves happening here again if you recall before we did not have any activity on this line and now with the brand new alternator we have these square waves so like I said before I didn't really know what uh, to expect to see on this line but now that we have a good working system you guys can use this for future reference all right so now before some of you guys start going nuts in the comment section about oh it's a brand new truck and it already needs an alternator let me share with you a story that the customer just told me apparently two weeks ago he went to an NTB to have his oil changed and at the NTB when they changed his oil they forgot to put the oil filler cap back on the valve cover. Now that oil filler cap is actually right above where the alternator is. So he said he drove the vehicle from here to San Antonio, which is about a 300 mile trip, before he noticed that the truck had a big oil leak. So anyways, he went back to an NTB, they found the filler cap actually on top of the engine, and they put it back on there, they topped off the oil, and they cleaned it off for him. Now that makes sense because when I pulled this alternator off, it was actually covered in oil. Now, I'm not trying to blame anybody or put anyone on blast, but I think that's probably why the alternator failed is because it got oil contamination from somebody leaving the oil cap off. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. I hope you found it informational. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy this channel and if you enjoy these case studies, please check out my channel. I have plenty of other case studies there for you to watch. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.